Okay, welcome to Artisan Infrastructure VPDC Getting Started series. Uh, in this video, we are going to be looking at how to deploy your uh, first VM. Now, we're going to be creating this VM uh, from a from from no template really. So this is going to be we're going to build build the uh, virtual uh, hardware uh, framework up and using the wizard, and then uh, mount up a uh, an ISO from the public data stores. And then we'll power that VM up and, and we'll start the build process. Okay, to get started, I've already logged into the infrastructure here. Um, so following on from our previous videos, uh, we did talk about uh, having a demo machine spun up in the environment for you. And that's what is reflected here in this, uh, in this example. So we'll ignore this test deployment for now. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a, a, a your first VM essentially. So from the home screen, which will default when you log in, uh, you want VMs and templates. Um, with your folder selected, um, you can select a new virtual machine. Uh, we're going to build a 2008 R2 server here. So we'll go for the typical. Um, typical allows us to um, have recommendations made by the system of what uh, virtual hardware we should use. Uh, you can use custom if you wish. Uh, it is recommended to use typical. Uh, there are some certain virtual hardware settings that are required uh, and best practices uh, that should be followed. I'm going to select the cluster, select my resource pool, select my data store. And it's at this point um, the wizard tries to recommend which type of virtual hardware you should have configured. So in this example, it's going to be a uh, 2008 R2 server, 64 bits, 40 gig hard drive. Uh, we can thin provision that. Um, at this stage, you can go edit uh, virtual machine settings. As practice, it's, it, it's possibly a, a good idea to remove any virtual hardware that's not required. It's only going to improve performance. You won't need a virtual floppy disk. Make sure your NIC is attached to your network. This is going to have a one virtual CPU. It's going to have four gig of RAM. And even before the machine's built, we can uh, tell the virtual uh, CD drive to point to um, the ISO that we wish to build off. So I'll just I'll just cover that ground again. So I've selected the virtual CD drive. I selected use data store ISO file. And browsing the data stores, you'll see your data store, and you'll also see uh, the public data stores. Windows OS. We'll drag this window open a bit. Is our R2 ISO connect it power on? There our machine pops up. You can see on the bottom here, task is completed. We can uh, power this machine up. We see the icon will change to a green uh, triangle. There we go, and we'll open the console, and you can see there. Oops, just, just disappeared into the background. Windows is loading. So really from here on in, it is uh, a Windows administrator's uh, everyday tasks uh, that the uh, machine will build. It's really treated like any uh, physical installation on a physical server, should I say. Um, if you do have custom ISOs, um, and you wish to load those up, what we can do is if you browse to your data stores uh, and browse to your data store in particular, and you browse to a folder, if you wish to upload your own ISO, you can do that uh, by selecting upload file and then browse to network. Allow this to load. This is actually going to map the drives on your local machine. 
and there we go you'll then see a selection of, of drives which reflect the drive letters to your local machine so you can then drill into your local machine from here and push up an ISO if for any reason uh, the transfer of the data is slow uh, or unusable due to bandwidth uh, problems on, on your end just please let us know and we'll provide you with a public FTP details where you can upload that data and we will then migrate that information into your data store making it available to you. Okay, I think that concludes uh, this uh, kind of mini part of how to create your first VM and uh, I'll see you in the next video.